In this video, we're going to talk about elbow pads and why I think you should be wearing them on certain types of trails and why you should learn from the mistake that I recently made. Several years ago, a buddy of mine put, I think it was a Facebook post, of his elbow completely gashed open after a mountain bike crash. Soon after that, I went out and got some Fox elbow pads. These are really nice because they're not that heavy. They're a little hot in warm weather. They don't have that much padding, but they're really good for just abrasions and of course protecting your elbow a little bit. Again, that you can't really see in the video, but the padding's not too thick, but they're decent. However, a few years ago, my son and I were going to get into Enduro racing and I picked up some thicker elbow pads, these POC elbow pads, and also a matching set of POC knee pads. Now, it didn't really pan out for our Enduro racing because COVID hit soon after that. And then my son fractured his wrist last year riding in North Carolina. And so we really haven't gotten into Enduro racing like we thought. However, I still use these a lot. In fact, let me ask you a question. What is the most common part of your body that you hit on your bars or your bike or the ground when you crash? Like every time. It's not your elbow, actually. It's your knee. And so I always wear knee pads when I'm riding my Enduro bike and usually my trail bike. In fact, whenever I have baggies on, I typically have knee pads on. Now, of course, I don't wear knee or elbow pads when I'm riding my cross country bike and absolutely not when I ride gravel. But again, in trail or Enduro, I've got my knee pads on and now I'm gonna start using the elbow pads on certain types of trails. So my son and I were riding at Canuga Bike Park in North Carolina. We're having a great day. It was just spectacular, just beautiful weather. And I was coming down, we were doing the only double black diamond there. And before we got on the trail, my son was eyeing this gnarly feature that we saw when we were going up the road to climb up to the trails. And it was this kind of like you have to go up this shark fin, off camber shark fin rock that was about this wide. So you had to nail it perfectly. And then you had to get onto this, this rock that dropped probably 15 feet straight down. And then it was fairly square at the bottom. And then you had this left hand catch berm. And I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of features and this one was gnarly. And, you know, it was at the end of the trip. Last year, he had fractured his wrist, no injuries this trip. So I was really thinking about it. I did not want him to do it. But we were on this double black diamond called Natural Selection. And there was this kind of like rock drop, like waterfall rocks. And then you come to this feature. So I'm talking, and you'll see. So I'm going to post a video of us riding Canuga Bike Park. And you'll see in that video the crash. And I was talking to the camera, talking about how I didn't really want him to do this feature and wasn't really focusing on my line. And I didn't know what happened until I went back and watched the video. And there was this slanted rock with this huge tree next to it. And I, my tire just got pushed into the tree and I kind of put my hands out and I hit this elbow on the tree, which wasn't that bad. It was scraped up, it wasn't too bad. But then I fell onto a rock and hit my ribs and my elbow. Now, some crashes look spectacular, but they're pretty low consequence. This one probably didn't look that spectacular because I wasn't really going that fast. Now, I had you know come down the rocks, so I was, had some speed, but it wasn't that fast. And it was just kind of a fall over, which if there weren't a rock there, it would have been no big deal at all. But I hit my elbow and, and, and again, hit my ribs and the ribs were what I felt the first. And I was like, oh, that's not good. And I stood up and then I looked down at my elbow and blood was just shooting out. And so, you know, my ride, my riding day was done. We were going to take a couple more runs, which I was kind of bummed. There were some trails that we hadn't hit yet at Canuga, which I was really looking forward to. And so I just rolled down the road. Um, my son Dawson hit some trails. In fact, he hit a tabletop at the end of natural selection. He said he'd never been in the air that long. He said he was in the air for like three or four seconds. So I wish I could have seen him hit it. But we got to the bottom and I was just like, man, I'm done. And so we went back to where we were staying in Brevard. And I went to CVS, got some butterfly bandages, got, you know, wound wash and all that. And then when we got back to the condo where we were staying, 
I was putting the butterfly bandages on and when I did, it kind of opened up the wound and I could see like way down inside there. And I'm like, oh gosh, I'm gonna have to go to the ER and get stitches. So went to the ER, sure enough, the ER doc's like, yeah, you gotta get stitches. And I was really glad we went to the ER because he found a lot of dirt down inside there. And so he had to scrape it out, wash it out. And um, so it probably would have gotten infected had I not gone to the ER. So I was really glad I went because like I said, I, it, was, it was deep. Um, so this is the elbow. Now, obviously it's healed up. It's been 11 days since the crash. And so um, I'll show what it looked like right after I got stitches. If you're squeamish, uh, look away. It's not too bad, it's nothing crazy at all. But if you don't like you know, wounds and blood, uh, look away. So here's the picture. And so I ended up getting four stitches and, you know, of course, like I said, having the wound cleaned out, all that could have been avoided had I remembered to put on my elbow pads. I had these in my bike bag in the car, these wonderful protective POC elbow pads that totally would have protected my elbow. I don't know why. I just completely forgot. I have my knee pads on. Have my gloves on, have my helmet, of course. Completely forgot about this. this. That's exactly why I got these things. I got them for enduro racing and riding bike parks. So now I am going to wear elbow pads whenever I ride technical descents, even if it's not at a bike park. So we ride trails like Black Mountain and Pisgah, uh, even more mellow descents that aren't as chunky and rough as Black Mountain. I'm going to have my elbow pads with me because these are so light. All I have to do is stick them in my hydration pack and then just pull them out at the top of the descent. Like Black Mountain, you're climbing for 45 minutes, 35 to 45 minutes, sometimes longer if you go all the way up to the top. And so, you know, you can stick these in your hydration pack and then put them on before the descent and protect your elbows. Because like I said, if you crash, most likely you're going to hit your knee hip and then land on your elbow and this you know the ribs still hurt uh, it, 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 i think it's the ribs it could be like a muscle contusion because it's more in the back where my lats are but even like it's 11 days and like if i lay down and touch that spot it's really sore now fortunately it doesn't hurt when i breathe so i can still ride um, but the ribs still hurt. But the elbow would have been an absolute non-issue. I probably wouldn't have had a scratch on my elbow. But now I've got, you know, a, I still have a knot. There's a big knot and I, I, can't, I still can't rest my arm on something. It's amazing how many times you rest your forearms on something when you're doing planks, working out, when you're taking care of business in the bathroom, um, all kind of places you rest your forearms. So now... I've got to put up with that. It's, pr it's probably going to be a month before there's no knot and no pain at all in this forearm. But like I said, that would have been a non-issue had I had elbow pads on. So when I do climbs, I will put my knee pads down on my ankles because I don't want to climb for 45 minutes to an hour with knee pads on. So I just drop them down, pull them on my ankles. So now my, my MO is going to be Top of the climb, pull up the knee pads, pull the elbow pads out of the hydration pack and get ready for the descent. Uh, again, probably most descents that I do now, I'm gonna have elbow pads, especially the more chunky ones. And of course, at any bike park, I'm gonna have elbow pads on. So, you know, that's my little story of elbow pads. And, um, you know, it's funny, I was, I don't know if you are on Cam Zink's Instagram, but, you know, I was thinking, oh, my four stitches, man, it's wound, wound was kind of nasty. He posted a, a, a Instagram video of a, a wound that he got in an enduro race last weekend when I'm recording this. Gnarly. Like, even Instagram said, you know, tap here to, pre, to see the video because it's, it's graphic. <laughs> and sure enough, it, I mean, the wound was like that big and the doctor was just opening it up. It was nasty. So that made my little elbow scratch seem like nothing. But the moral of the story is um, you should always wear knee pads when you're mountain biking, anything technical, uh, anything above cross country. I just highly recommend using knee pads. And now I highly recommend using elbow pads because it's just not worth it. 
you know, and, and the thing about pads is, you know, you, you do 40 rides without a crash and you're just like, eh, I don't need the pads. And then you had just the one crash. I mean, just the one little slide out onto a rock and it, you know, just happened that I landed on a rock. You just you can't control it. You know, when you crash it, everything happens in a split second. You can't control where you land. Um, just the way it goes. So yeah, that's uh, the quick video. Well, not, not, that was kind of a long video actually of why you should wear pads and even yellow pads. Have any stories of crashes where you did or did not have your pads on? Drop those in the comments below. Thanks for watching.